are listening to the 4-7 Podcast, the podcast where two normal guys interview and reminisce about their favorite Christian artists from the 90s and today. Welcome to the 4-7 Podcast. I am RJ. This is Mike, as always. Uh, I am very excited today. Uh, we are welcoming uh, Seth Roberts to the uh, podcast today, uh, who is from uh, Watashi Wa, among many other things that we will get into uh, throughout the, the night. So, hey, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I really, awesome. I'm excited. So we uh, started this podcast a while ago to talk some of our favorite uh, just uh, Christian rock artists back in the day and today we've had you know bands from Tooth and Nail from from Solid State um, some of the mainstream ones as well um, and then some newer ones uh, as well it's been really cool to be able to talk and just kind of uh, you know discover the person um, and so again we're welcoming Seth Roberts today um, if you remember uh, Tooth and Nail uh, if you were a listener of Tooth and Nail back in the day uh, very influential um, back in the early 2000s so um, and, and is still doing uh, some really cool music uh, even today. So, um, again, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So kind. <laughs> so, hey, I'll, I'll get right into it. I actually found you, as always, if you ever listen to any of our uh, podcasts, um, I always find these bands on the X compilation albums, uh, that uh, the Christian Rock uh, X albums. And you were on the first one as a bonus track uh, called Clear, um and i heard you on there and i was like man this sounds really good and then i got into um all of me i think was another uh mm -hmm. one that i loved a ton uh, but i, I discovered you That's on awesome. the x album from 2003 um along with uh, i think toby mac was on there five iron frenzy uh switchfoot and berlin and all that deal so um awesome. it was uh, x that really opened me up to like tooth and nail and such mike was was a longtime listener of Christian rock way before me when I was just listening to Jars of Clay. He was already <laughs> into the harder stuff. Um, <laughs> awesome, but uh, uh, and I brought yeah, it back. So for us, I brought it back for today. Just kidding. That's true. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about um, kind of where you know where where you grew up and you know what was what was childhood like for you. What what kind of you know stuff were you into? Yeah, I grew up in. Um... <clears throat> Uh, mostly in San Luis Obispo, California. I was born in Bishop, kind of near Mammoth Mountain. And then I, when I was really young, we moved to San Luis Obispo. And um, my parents were, you know, were amazing. My dad uh, moved there to start a foster care agency uh, with like family therapy. And he kind of did some, he kind of pioneered something like innovative in that world. Uh, they weren't really doing like therapeutic foster care on the West Coast. So he moved to, to you know, to San Luis Obispo to start an uh, agency doing that. And, you know, since then it's been, I guess, uh, what is it, <laughs> 35 years of him uh, doing that. And so he's always kind of been my hero. And, and my parents were really supportive of me uh, getting into music, you know, early on of course like um i kind of followed after my dad and and my grandma they played music um and they my grandma lived locally too she lived like pretty pretty close to san luis obispo moro bay so she taught me piano uh, growing up and yeah we um <clears throat> we kind of got we were only you know really listening to christian music and uh who are you listening to for christian music back then well at first you know i didn't really know much uh when i was like younger i was kind of like i think my first in like third grade my first was like dc talk and you know <laughs> amen uh, to that jars of clay all that stuff hey and rj i'm telling you RJ, you guys are like a match made in heaven right now yeah. that's what it is it was yeah jars of clay and and it was it was it was post hip-hop dc talk for me i had to get into that stuff later but yeah it was just the rock dc talk <laughs> yeah and then there was like some like um you know i would find some like rap groups you know um or different like um i think there was one called like now I want to say NFT, but I think that's just because <laughs> NFTs are so popular. <laughs> uh, 
No, but no, D Boy. I like D Boy. And then okay. uh, there was like some heavy metal groups that I liked. Um, that kind of that's when I discovered uh, Tooth and Nail. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then my parents, you know, they were they were on board because it was Christian. So that's what I, I was just <laughs> became obsessed with everything Tooth yeah, and Nail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said you listen to so you're, you're from California, and one thing I love about the Tooth and Nail, I talked to a lot. We talked to a lot of Tooth and Nail artists, and um, there's a guy named Billy Power who was part of the bland Blenderhead back in the day. Yes, he's, he a, good, also, he's a good friend, good buddy. Great guy. His podcast was fantastic. Now, did you ever hear his podcast he had for years? Yeah, I. Yes, yeah, I love. It, I love it, Bill. It was great. Podcast. And, you know, a lot of the bands on Tooth and Nail, they're all very close. They all kind of grew up in the scene together. And um, the one thing that I will bring up, I'm going to kind of go forward a little bit. You were on Betty Rocket Records back in the yeah. day, your first couple of records. Now, I like to say Betty Rocket, Betty Rocket, Betty, Ro- Betty Rocket Records. Look, I say that water. fast. <laughs> Listen, this water is killing me today. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Rocket Records was like a very, very small kind of tooth and nail kind of band because tooth and nail for years was that punk rock and they hardcore scene. They had like focal point, they had blender head, they, had, they started a curve MXPX. And then, as as uh, Tooth and Nails kind of started going more away from that into the more of like the further seems forever and Berlin, you know, Betty Rock and picked up kind of where they left off. They had sick of it all, sick of change. They had you guys. They had CR thirty three. Um, they had Phoenix. Was a Phoenix eleven or Noggin Deboggin back in the day? How did oh yeah. You- yeah, how did you go? Like Jeff Newsom actually was, was I think was the lead yeah. singer of not yeah, now he's a yeah. world famous wedding photographer. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, I love Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did you get into the whole scene of like with not with um Betty with Betty Rocket Records and the thing of that? Take us to that aspect. I love that. I love that you know all that. And I'm seeing I'm just now seeing some comments too. Uh someone saying they their their cousins live mm-hmm. yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, so um Betty Rocket, you know, we fir- when we first started Watashiwa, um, we were playing a lot of churches, and it was a it was a cool little scene in in our area. You know, we would play like San Jose, and kind of like up near San Francisco, and we would go down to L.A. and It was nice that we were kind of centrally located in California because we could kind of trade shows with bands in L.A. and San Francisco. You know, yeah, yeah. So, we got to start playing with all these bands. I mean, we were playing with like value pack and um, value pack. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. We were playing with like value pack and uh, joy electric and all these bands. Nice. And we were, like, You're bringing me back over here, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like really young. So then we would, we would Betty rocket kind of came up and they were out of kind of Santa Cruz area, which is pretty close to us. And, um, Mike, our guitar player, his his brother was in Noggin Toboggan, Jeff, Jeff Newsom. Newsom, yep. Yeah. So Mike Newsom was our guitar player. And so when Noggin Toboggan signed with Betty Rocket, you know, they we was like, whoa, there's this new l- label, you know. So we kind of started that, you know, thinking like, okay, let's make a demo tape. Let's do this, you know, let's try to get their attention. So that was our first we recorded a demo tape and we played, you know, we kind of played a couple big festival shows in our area um, and met, you know, we were playing with a lot of the Betty Rocket bands already. And so it kind of just made sense. We met Betty Rocket and they, you know, they offered us a deal and it was cool. Yeah. It was awesome. Very exciting for, I think we were like, yeah, I think we were like 15 or something. Oh, like, wow. like, like imagine you're 15 years old. You're playing with like Nagatabog and Sick of Change. You're playing with Phoenix Eleven, Phoenix yes, Eleven, all these all... great bands. Like at 15 years old, I'm over here like at my friend's house, just doing nothing. You're torn the, like, you're torn California. This is that's like amazing. Yeah, it was fun, and we got to tour. We got to do when I on my high school <clears throat> summer breaks, my parents let me go on tour. So we got to tour. Like our first tour was with EMH. War Rocket Ajax. We played some shows with Noggin Toboggan, you know, and then we were playing with like 
um, the Huntington's were part of it and Element 101 and some of the oh, wow. Tooth and Nail band. Element 101, I haven't heard that name in like 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Sick of Change, you know, yes. all the all the cool bands back then. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so you're a you're a 15 year old, 16 year old playing with all these bands. What was it like being in that uh, that atmosphere and and being basically doing what you want to do, but being also 15, 16 years old? What was that like for you? It was crazy. I mean, it was awesome. It, it was like very much we you know we felt like it, it was a calling that God called us to you know um, and looking back on it we didn't it's like i didn't really think much about it i don't I, or i i didn't think as much about it as i maybe should have um but i but we were just so thrilled and you know we couldn't drive yet even for like all those shows so my dad would take us you know we would rent a trailer and he would take us or uh our friend kendall who was older would drive us so but yeah, it was surreal, you know, really. It was all surreal. We would kind of like, it was almost like we were living these two lives too because we would go to high school and we would tell all of our, all of our friends like, oh, after high school, we're going to go on tour and, you know, be musicians. And everyone, I remember my whole high school class like laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, reference point for them. They're like, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. Um, you, you guys remind me of MXPX and when MXPX was first signed to Tooth and Nail they were also in high school just like you guys and then, then they would totally. tour in, in the summertime MXPX was like they were our heroes mm. you know and then I ended up playing with them for a little while after Watashiwa so that was pretty surreal too but yeah they were the band that really gave us like permission because it let us know like hey this is possible like you can be in a band in high school you can be young you can do this and even showing my parents, like, hey, listen, like, there's this band that I like. They're in high school. You know, they started in high school. So my parents were really supportive because they could kind of see, like, oh, this is. And then, obviously, once we got the the deal with Betty Rocket, my parents were like, oh, this is, you know, this is, makes sense. But, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. Pretty, pretty. I mean, everything, I feel like everything that God, uh, like, it when you're really, like, living in faith or just kind of going after like what your calling is, then it's pretty surreal, you know, you know at awesome. 15 years old, you know, cause like I kind of what you're saying is like, you know, when God calls you to do something, you know, I mean, and you do it, he just blesses it. And it's just an amazing thing at 15 years old. Did you feel like God was calling you to uh, music to be for your music industry to, or your music um, band to be a ministry or where were you at that time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were like, were very, um, like had, a felt very strongly called to, to like make music to bring salvation, you know, but, awesome. but we wanted, it was interesting. Cause like looking back on it, it was almost like we wanted to like pave this way in outside of the Christian market or something yeah um, so it was like always like we were trying to fight against the plane in churches but really that was that was so special like looking back on it you know but yeah we always felt like um like watashiwa i mean watashiwa means i am you know mm -hmm. and which um to us like it was always we always had specific like things in mind that we felt like God called us to, you know, with that. Um, and I still feel like that's why I started with Tashiwa back again, because I, I feel like God's called me back to it. You know, that's well, awesome. That's how, like, you, I, that's awesome. How, like, you know, God calls you to different things at different times of your life. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I do a Bible study on Monday, on Sunday nights at my church. And, you know, we talk about, you know, just, Staying in the word, trusting God, because God's gonna have your back. He's gonna show you where to go at certain time. You literally have to just be like, whatever you want me to do, I'm gonna I'm ready for whatever you want me to do. And at different times in your life, God can call you to different places. And sometimes it might shock you. Has it shocked you that you're going back to a tissue while years later? Yeah, it's I mean it's interesting because um I had so many years where I was just like struggling on trying to understand like 
what was this and why and you know i um but it's like also amazing because it's like you start to realize things uh, you, you know god starts to reveal things over time and then it's like whoa this is this is the reason why you know mm -hmm. um so i definitely feel like a new uh, you know in the last like two years like a new feeling of like oh this is why god's called me back to this and this is why you know i had to kind of take some time away from this and even with the music that i was making with eager seas and um and lakes you know there was there's something about that that you know i kind of needed that season in my life you know i know that mm -hmm. um and it, and it was very reflective like personal reflective music that like you know i was going i went through a divorce and went through some stuff that I kind of almost looking back, I think I needed that little time of, um, you know, processing with that, that, that type of music or, you know, I guess that project, but, you know, with Tashiwa always represented, um, making like very like positive, uplifting music that's like fun and hopefully gets people dancing and, mm -hmm. and is like, bringing is inspiring people towards Christ, you know, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so you were, you signed, were signed to, to Betty, Rocket, Betty Rocket and then to the nail came around, I think it was like, Oh, two ish. Um, yeah. uh, when you signed to them, what was that? How did that transition come along from Betty Rocket to tooth and nail? Yeah, I think we signed, we actually signed. So in Betty Rocket, we signed a little earlier. I think it was like, Oh, 2000 and 2001. Yeah, they, they, they started around like 99, 2000. Yeah. I'm trying to remember now. And then, yeah, we signed with Tooth and Nail. And then we we actually made the album a year before it came out, um, The Love of Life. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was, that was really, <clears throat> that was a really cool experience. You know, for us, Tooth and Nail was always, you know, like I said earlier, like those are the bands that, we just listened to so much, you know, we listened to everything that Tooth & Nail put out, you know, it didn't matter what genre. And so that was always kind of like a, not a dream of ours to be on the label, but it felt really like special to us, you know. Um, it was actually the most perfect timing when you got signed to Tooth & Nail because around 2000, 2001, Tooth & Nail was kind of transitioning away from like the indie punk bands like MXP. Well, they still had MXPX, but like Dogwood was on their label for many yeah. years. Like Strong Arm, The Blamed, and they started really going more to the indie pop rock stuff. And then you guys were signed right at like that exact time when they were transitioning into what they are kind of going into today. Yeah, Totally. Yeah, it's interesting because like we met Amberlynn and May and Under Oath, like all these bands kind of around the same time that we were signing at Cornerstone. And um, it's cool to look back on because now, you know, obviously you see what's happened. And but yeah, it was it was it did feel like a perfect timing. And we we, um, you know, I think we were so young that by the time we got to Tooth and Nail, I don't think we really realized, you know, like it was almost like we were a little tired from the the two albums on <laughs> Betty Rocket and touring, and we were already kind of <laughs> jaded. Not really, but um, but yeah, we um, that first out making that first album was amazing. We recorded up in Vancouver, and we just couldn't believe like the studio and the whole experience was just awesome. Um, so you had the, you had the love of life. That was your first tooth and nail uh, album. And then a couple years or three years later, you had eager seas, um, which I think yep. still came out under the Watashi wa name. Yes. Um, and, uh, love of life is when I got into you. And again, I just feel like we started this podcast because I feel like that time for me, that was like the golden age of like just tooth and nail and Christian music. Like there was two thousands, early two thousands. I got into Emery. I got into Anne Berlin. I got into you guys. May actually may we're in talks with of having them on the podcast. They were supposed to be on last week. Oh, um, awesome. And so Tell they're, they're going to be on soon. Whoever comes on. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was Dave. Yeah, so we uh, we're, we're we're setting a new date. We had to we had to um, to cancel last week, but um, but yeah, it's just so cool to see and then to see that a lot of these bands, um, whether they're together or not, are still doing really awesome things. Um, and uh, and their music is still being reached. I wanted to share with you. I don't know if this will make you feel old or not, but um, my seven year old um, was in the car with me just two days ago, blasting all of me um oh, and just awesome. singing so you have a whole new generation of people listening to uh all of me by watashi wa so yes that's um, awesome <laughs> so you, you mentioned you got on there you did you did an album uh the love of life you kind of mentioned it already that you were a little maybe burnt out or or just tired i don't know um but what was that like getting into the tooth and nail mix uh releasing that album and then now starting to tour with some of these bands what, what were you guys uh dealing with at that time yeah, you know, we we sign, um, we made the album, and then uh, we we spent a long time trying to find tours uh, to to try to like support the album, and you know, hindsight twenty twenty, like like I was saying earlier, we were kind of trying to not play churches uh, for the last couple of years. Before that, we had only toured church t- tours, really, you know, and so we were trying to find tours that were like more club tours and um we just couldn't find any (laughs) you know it was like for so long we were just like why can't we find any anything you know and so i think looking back on it we probably should have just toured the church tours you know and (laughs) just put the album out but we were being stubborn and young and um so we waited and finally we you know we did put the 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 album out and we started doing some tours like um just small tours um nothing really like was sticking you know a lot of the other bands were like uh i think you know even the way because our album was like a little bit softer than that the the other stuff like not not the head it wasn't like a heavy as heavy as amberlin but it wasn't as like um I don't know. So for whatever reason, we were like having a hard time landing like, something to support the album. So finally we, we did, I think the big, the first big tour we did was that tooth and nail tour, you know, with, with me without you and Amberlynn and Emery. And so, you know, after that we started to kind of gain some momentum and tour with more bands. Our first kind of, you know, big tour, outside of that tooth and nail tour that I just remembered that was before it was with Copeland. Um, Oh, wow. Great. And we both went on our first like U S tours together. So we, neither one of us had a following, you know, much of a following. Um, Like, so, (laughs) you know, the shows were amazing, but looking back on it, it was, it was just a really fun tour. Uh, And we became such good friends with those guys. Um, but yeah, tooth and nail tour kind of snowballed into some more. Um, and yeah, it was cool. We, we, we were like, at that point we were like, just having a great time. Yeah. It's funny looking back on that time and, and thinking that you guys were worried that people wouldn't show up to an Anne Berlin, me without you with Tashiwa Emery concert. And now you guys could do a cruise and (laughs) (laughs) like, it's just like, like you, kick, you, you kick DC talk off their cruise. You guys put your own cruise right there. I'll tell you yeah, right now. Should. That's a great idea. No, but like <laughs> honestly, like I, you know, back in the day, I feel like those tours were everywhere. Like there was a bunch of these, and then you look back and you're like, man, I could have seen these bands for like five dollars. Yeah. And now it's like you know, like Emory, you know, they almost never come up this far, you know, to Rhode Island. Yeah. So when they come around, I'm willing to, I'm willing to dish it out, but. Um, so, yeah. you know, you mentioned Amberlynn, Me Without You, yourselves, Emery, you know, that was your first, I assume, larger scale tour. Um, you did come up near us. You were in Worcester, which was awesome, uh, over at the Palladium Worcester. at the time. Worcester. Um, so, you know, what was that tour like for you guys? Um, you know, any, any good memories from, from that time? Yeah, that tour was awesome. I mean, like I said, that it was very life changing for me. You touring with those bands, becoming friends with those bands. Um, me without you, you know, a lot of our we we became so close with them, and they were so uh, inspirational. The way 
that they saw the world, like their faith and their worldview. Um, it definitely like taught me a lot, just like being around them. Amber Lynn, same, like I became, we became so close. Nate, Nate actually played on our last album, Nate um, Young from Amber Lynn, played drums on the whole last album um, that we did. And we're still, you know, we're still like so close, like Steven just sang on the new album. And um, so it's, that tour was just like very, it was very special. It was like every day we were all hanging out. Um, really, really got, you know, got along right off the bat. Everyone, all the bands got off, you know, right off like the first show. We were all kind of like, oh man, let's go hang out. I think we went to the beach after the first show <laughs> and like went swimming. Awesome. Yeah. So it was rad. Yeah. It was really, really good memories. The end of the tour, there was like some pranks though. That that went a little south. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked about that on one of the podcasts. But oh, yeah, I just, nice. very cool. Well, hey, uh, you know, from there, you guys did another album uh, with Tooth and Nail. But around that time frame, um, Watashi Wa, uh, I think, essentially broke up around that. Yeah. Time. And yeah. you went into another project, staying with Tooth and Nail. What happened there? You know, what what was the transition about there? Yeah, so we, it was interesting. Like our guitar player quit. Um, you know, after the Love of Life, uh, our our original or the second guitar player of Watashiwa, Mike Newsom, he quit after we recorded Love of Life, and. So we we started playing with a, our our good friend Luke and we toured we toured and toured and toured with Luke kind of supporting that album and then after it was I think it was after the Tooth and Nail tour Luke quit and so we were kind of like trying to get new guitar players and it was like things just work, weren't working out. We were doing different tours with different guitar players and it was, and then uh, I think we were on tour with May um, and our, our guitar player, our, at that time, you know, our most recent guitar player, actually Andrew from Sick of Change uh, was playing guitar with us. <laughs> nice. You guys know Sick of Change? Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which Andrew and I just talked last week, funny enough, we hadn't talked in a while, oh, that's cool. but yeah, he, he needed to quit and go home on our, after our first show on that May tour. So oh, wow. after that, it was just kind of like our last blow it was like, man, what is going on? Like, we just can't keep this together. And so we, we went up and recorded, um, in an EP with Mike, Herrera from MXPX. We had talked about doing like a Watashiwa Arthur split. Do you, do you guys know the band Arthur? They're like oh, Ar Ar Arthur was MXPX's side band, right? Yeah, they had like yeah. a side band side project. Yeah, was Mike so we Herrera, were, was a Mike Herrera's side band specifically? It was it was all the guys from MXPX and then Neil, um, their their guitar tech. Got, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, nice. So we were gonna do this, uh, you know. Uh, a split with them so we went up there we recorded mike produced it that was awesome we're gonna put that out at some point it's we still haven't released it <laughs> oh, very cool very cool yeah <laughs> it's coming <laughs> <laughs> and then uh so and then right after that things just fizzled right out you know so mike asked me if if i wanted to play start playing with them and that's when i started playing with mxpx um and and, and Watashiwa kind of broke up essentially, <laughs> and I, then I guess, so. And then I'd I ask you this, yeah, go for it. Oh no, 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 you guys. No, I ask you this question. So you're, it's like you were at this mountain. Like your life started, you know, 15 years old. You're you're in Watashiwa. You're 15 years old. You're on Buddy Rocket Records. Then you go to the next step, Tooth and Nail Records. <laughs> Then you go to the next step. You're like playing with your one of your idols, MXPX here. Right. right? It's insane. Yeah. Describe <laughs> that. When, when you get that call, you're like, hey, want to play with us? You're like, excuse me? Say yeah, again. totally. No, it's it's weird. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like 
you know, just, I'm just, I'm so thankful. And, but I also felt like, oh, this was meant to be, you know, on some level, um, or God's plan, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and all, like I said, it, it starts to feel when you're living that way, it starts to feel like, whoa, this is surreal all the time, you know? Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was so fun to play with them. They're my heroes still. I love those guys still. And I played with them for a little while and then kind of got to a point where I was like, okay, I want to work on my own music again. Um, and at that point I thought it was, it was like a new, essentially a new band. And we were called Eager Seas at that point. Um, so we made a record. Mike and the MXPX guys played a, a lot on the record because um, that you know because Watashiwa had kind of essentially broken up. Lane, who played in Watashiwa drums, he he played on that Eager Seas album, and me and Jason, and then the MXPX guys essentially uh, some of the. One of the guys from 90 Pound Wuss played on some of it. We had like, um, you know, friends come do stuff on it, sing stuff on it. Um, so it, that that album became much more of like a project album, not less like a band. And I that was the first album I made like that, you know. Uh, hmm. it w- now, is which album is that one off in? Is that the, That's the agreement the, one or? So that is... What that is what became Watashiwa Eager Seas. Oh, so okay. I'm with you. Ten years right. in separating states and all those. Um mm-hmm. so and the the story is with that, we finished that album and we the album and the label didn't really mesh all the way. <laughs> so <laughs> we we ended up asking to get out of our deal. Um, you know, our A and R guy didn't really Honestly, he didn't really like the album. Um, and so that's why we called it Watashiwa. That's why we put it out under the name Watashiwa to get okay, out okay. of our, our deal. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> how does this whole, but so, I'm so how glad does this, that it's a Watashiwa album because it feels like a Watashiwa album to me. <laughs> how does it go? Like you put your, like you spent hours, maybe months, weeks, months, producing and now al- writing an album recording an album your a r guy gets it he's like this sucks like yeah. how does that like what does that do to you like like <laughs> i would have been to- i would have been like well i don't like you either so <laughs> i don't know me and chad have a way a weird way of we i don't know we there's some something that just <laughs> doesn't work <laughs> are you guys still are you guys still friends today with the a r guy yeah, I mean, we talked. We were we we had he had talked to me about playing a festival that he was doing, and just saying how it was going to be a sure shot and everything, and then um, it didn't work out. <laughs> so that was the last I talked to. Him. <laughs> All right. So from there, you did um, you know things with with Eager C's name. Um, you did some stuff with Lakes, the Lakes name. Um, you mentioned, you know, uh, just personal life, uh, maybe being, uh, a, a little hectic during that time. What was this time like for you after Watashiwa, um, yeah. you know, kind of during this whole, this whole period, what was that like for you? Yeah. So after I, after I left MXPX, put out the Watashiwa Eager Seas album, uh, we did a tour with our first tour to kind of support that was with Copeland, Love Drug, Acceptance um and us and nice. we and then shortly after that i got married my uh and my wife at that time uh to be completely honest just didn't want me to tour anymore didn't want me to play music anymore so i oh. yeah <laughs> how do you so, how do, how does that conversation even like come to an agreement cuz like you have your two loves. You have your first love, music and touring, and then this new love comes in and is like, yeah, no, it's like it's almost like the jealousy of the ex girlfriend. Now you can't be over there. That's yeah, that's nothing. You can't hang out over there. Like, yes. How do you pick between that one? It was hard, and it was, and I was so young and naive, you know. So I turn. I actually turned down a lot of opportunities at that point. It was even. I started like writing songs for 
some pretty, you know, major artists and I was like getting into some pretty cool opportunities. And, um, you know, we did the EP with Militia Group, the, the Lakes Photographs EP. And we were pl we planning on kind of tour starting a tour and uh, get that Lakes off the ground. And then um, that was kind of when the the big news dropped that I had to, <laughs> I couldn't really tour, you know. Um, and then uh, we ended up, I ended up having kids, two girls, which nice. I'm so, yeah, so thankful for. And so touring, you know, I, I would just kind of like got more into recording projects with Lakes. And so we would tour as much as we could, you know, as much as made sense with, with trying to focus and being present as a father and, and a husband. And, um, and then we, um, you know, I, I went through that, the divorce and made, you know, made a couple albums about that, <laughs> about like, you know, the agreement album and, um, and, you know, fire ahead were very much, uh, you know, about that time in my life. And then uh, got remarried. Fire Ahead is a lot about that too. And um, kind of like my my daughters now as they're getting older, I've been able to like get more into music again, you know, nice. again. Nice. And um, so the last album we did, mine as well. You know, we did we did some touring on those last couple albums. Um, we did we toured with like Amber Amberlynn on their farewell tour and. Uh, you know, kind of got to do some cool things around, around some of those albums. Um, and yeah, just recently we've, we're, you know, we we're about to put out a new album this year or maybe two albums this year, but I think for sure one. Um, no, and no. like I said, kind of got back into doing Watashiwa again. So. Okay, nice. So during that time you mentioned you got remarried, uh, you, you have two, two daughters, what was it like have you know uh, your two daughters are now uh, uh, older i, I assume yeah. what do they think of you your watashi wa your, your musical career what is that like for them having you as 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 a father yeah it'd be cool to ask them <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're, so they're 13 and 15 and uh so we're my oldest is a sophomore in high school and so they're listening to a lot of music that you know, honestly, that I used to listen to, and it's fun age because they're listening to stuff that we listen to, and that stuff's kind of coming around again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's kind of cool again, and so even some of the stuff, I think that you know, I think they think I'm their friends think I'm cool, you know. Uh, <laughs> but there's definitely like still that thing of like, duh. They call me <laughs> Papa. They call me Papa. So they're just, you know, they are, you know, embarrassed of me. They they think I'm not as as cool as they are but but they <laughs> so yeah for me cool. i have i have uh oh man i gotta count them i have four children and um oh, that's i awesome. i uh am at the point now where i try to get them into the music that i like to listen to so that i don't have to listen to bad music but similarly uh, they've taylor gotten swift. Me into their music too yes i have to li i listen to taylor swift quite often hey Tay's my faith that's fine uh you know some of the stuff they're listening to have they brought you into any music that you're you you sh you know maybe shouldn't say out loud all right what are you what are you listening to with your daughters that you know is not oh cool? no i mean i like everything i like all music um and honestly i love pop music and i've introduced like i told them about lizzo i was like lizzo's gonna be <laughs> huge. you guys don't even know and they were like what what is this i played yeah. water me for them uh <laughs> so you know, I try to like, I lo I'm obsessed with music. So I'm always listening to new music and yeah. Um, but then they introduce a lot of cool bands to me that I've never, there's all these cool new bands that sound like bands that I used to listen to. And I'm like, <laughs> Whoa, this band's awesome. Um, and they're kind of into, um, the, mo you know, cool music that I think nice. they're, a lot of their friends too are kind of into stuff that I used to li even listen to. And, and when I was younger, like the Smiths and so, yeah, it's fun. It's a cool age with music for them, that high school age, you know, but they, of course we listened to Taylor Swift a ton with them growing <laughs> up, you know, 
and all the Katy Perry and all the pop yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. But I'm not. I listen to that stuff anyways. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good with it too. So yeah. Um, so you know, Eager Seas. You came out with. Um, you said mine as well. Uh, back in 18 in 2020, as you as everyone knows, we hit our our pandemic across mm-hmm. the world. Uh, what has the last two years been like for you? Um, I guess on one hand, musically, and then on the other hand, uh, personally, uh, how how have the last two years been for you? Man, yeah, really hard. Really rocked my my world. Uh, in in a good good and bad, you know. Um, but musically, you know, I made a lot of music. I made probably like four albums or something. Or nice. I'm not done with them yet, but um, you know, enough to kind of finish up four albums. And. So that's exciting. And I'm really, you know, for me, it became this time of my family went through a lot. Um, you know, I'm, I'm remarried. I were co-parenting with my ex-wife and there's a lot of challenges that every family faces with that. You throw in a pandemic, you throw in a high schooler that's starting high school first year online, you know, mm-hmm. and and then all of these factors of like, you know, me and my ex-wife don't really see eye to eye with faith or, or, um, that's going to be a challenge or even the pandemic stuff, you know? And so that became a really big, that became a really big, um, challenge because, you know, it's like, it's already a hard time in the world. And then our, you know, our family is kind of faced with this, like, term almost like inner turmoil of like not being aligned um on the same page because everything got heightened you know everything got so fearful with the media and there this like to pick a side choose a side this side or that side like <laughs> you know yeah um and i just so, picked the right i just picked the right side that's all i did yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um so obviously that influence music became kind of my outlet to like to really express all my ideas honestly as like a almost 40 year old with with daughters that I'm trying to teach them like this is what I believe is right you know so the music really became reflective of that like this is my faith this is like what I believe as an adult father husband that's like feeling called by God to make music again. Um, and it's just, it feels like it's just coming out of me. Like I'm waking up every day. I'm like, I'm recording three songs in the morning. Like, Oh my gosh, there's all these ideas. <laughs> you know? So I'm praise God. Like I'm excited what happened during the pandemic with that. But it was also that challenge of like, you know, I'm, I made a lot of music, made a lot of art. Um, at the same time that I'm trying to um, be be wise and be a leader in my family, you know, you know, going through that divorce and then writing music, you know, where was how, how did that impact your faith? Because I find a lot of times when when people come when push comes to shove in situations in life, people either go one way or the other. You know, very rarely do people just kind of stay in the middle. You know, you know. I think I feel like the Satan can really pull Absolutely. someone one yeah. way. Like, where, what happened? Where did you go? What, what was your struggles during that time? Totally, that's a great question. You know, honestly, going into the pandemic, I was like in a pretty lost. I got to be honest, like a lost yeah. place. Like I was kind of, I felt like um, God called me back to to Him. You know, Amen. Um, and you know, looking back on it. I see why, you know, I see why um, I kind of got lost in a way, you know, like going through the those things of like a divorce and everything. It's like, you know, it's like my everything was kind of like thrown into chaos and trying to just re gather myself and re understand who I am and all that, you know. So, and then even my faith, like I was raised Christian with a Christian family. I went to Christian school, K through 12. I went through like a Christian preschool. So I definitely went through this, like trying to question my, like, is my faith real? You know, 
And especially after, after that divorce where it was like, man, I really, I mean, it helped me. It, it really like rocked my world. It, it like really pushed me into this place of like questioning everything, you know? Um, but it also, it also helped me see so much. And now I think really getting to that point where my kids, my daughters um, are now older and they're facing these things where it's like, okay, I really am at this point where I need to, I need to teach. I really need to figure out what do I believe about this? And then you start to see like, Oh, that is what I believe. That's, awesome. I, that's what I'm saying. And then the pandemic just really, that was when it was just like, boom, that, that really pushed me into a place. Like I said, that I feel like God, like just woke me up. You know, it was like an awakening for a lot of people. Um, and definitely like for me as like, like a father, it really, it, it was almost like he, I felt like he called me to like step up and be a leader in my faith for my daughters. And then in the same way in my art and in my music and in all that, like, I felt like just like, now's the time. You got to say something because what's happening in the media, I work for News Corp. I do a lot of work for News Corp, you know, mm -hmm. um, the News Corp company. And I just feel like what's happening in the media and, and the way that artists um, and musicians are so influenced uh, by what I think is not <laughs> what I believe. Like, I think it's, it's the biggest time to take, like – artists to like make art and music and and movies or whatever that that is like a full expression of like this is what i believe as like a christian man of god you know in the coolest way possible obviously you know make something but i think that we're gonna see a little bit of a art renaissance you know christian art renaissance um because there's a lot of people like me that feel like okay i you know, I want to be a little bit more vocal now about um, what I believe, you know, and there's a lot, you know, there is a lot in the album about the pandemic. And, you know, I tried to kind of take a, a silly, not a silly, but like a lighthearted, um, you know, Watashiwa view on, on it. But this it is very much like honest about what I think about the the pandemic and, and, um, just like where we're at right now as a society. You know, I agree with you. Well, two things I agree with. First thing I want to say is I agree with you that, um, well, first I commend you for when you were going through that trial, you know, the Bible says, you know, from James chapter one, verse one, two trials is the testing of your faith. And a lot of times people say, you know, God bless me. And they always, they always say material things. God bless me with a, a new phone or whatever money. But they never say, God bless me with a trial. Mm. And those trials, I'm telling you right now, we wouldn't be who we are without trials in our life. And yeah, absolutely. We have an opportunity to look that trial in the face and say, you know, God, I am with you on this one, God. Whatever you take me, I'm going, but I'm going with you and nobody else. And that sounds exactly what you did. I think that's awesome. And the other part I want to say is, you know, I'm Harry. I, I believe right now, especially in our Christian faith in this world, we're almost trying, not we are, but people are almost trying to shut us up and yeah. not say things. And I feel like I'm not saying Christians have to get political, but I'm saying that Christians do need to start speaking. Yeah. Talking about, talking about their faith. Like it says in Matthew, it says, go to the ends of the earth and make disciples. It doesn't say sit on your butt, but it does say, we are to try to make disciples, but try to, we need to talk about our faith, express yeah. our faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I like, uh, I appreciate you telling us your, your story over the last couple of years here. You know, we, uh, I've dealt with very similar things. I went through a divorce uh, back in uh, 16, 17 and both mm. of us are Christian and that was just a tough world to navigate divorce in, you know, in the church and the Christianity uh, realm of things. And I have two kids from that marriage that are now uh, nine uh, or 10 and uh, seven. Um, and just having to um, guide them through that time along with myself. Um, and then on top of that, you know, just like you, 
having you know an ex that I have to work with uh, and we don't always agree or, or, or see things eye to eye. Um, yeah. And then the pandemic hitting, you know, just like you said, it's it's um, it, it's been a very teachable moment for my kids. You know, we we've tried to use all of the stuff that happened in the last two years, you know, in our world, in our country um, to, as, as teachable moments, you know, for our kids. Absolutely. Um, yeah. so it's, it's, it's great. I'm glad that you, you, you went through that, but you mentioned a couple of things about this coming year. You mentioned, uh, I think working on some stuff with uh, eager seas as well as Watashiwa, or is it all Watashiwa? Uh, what, what's this year look like for you? Yeah, just Watashiwa, um, okay. is my focus right now. Like I said, I, I always felt like, you know, I felt called to Watashiwa at a young age and, and I feel called to that again. And um, so we have, we do have an album that is finished. <laughs> that's like coming out for sure this year. Awesome. <laughs> so that's exciting. And it's got a lot of the guys that we talked about, like Josh from Dogwood is on it and Matt from Reliant K. Is he really? Josh from Dogwood's on, what's he doing on it? Billy from Blenderheads on it. Is he really? Yeah. A bunch Sweet. of friends. Yes. Nice. Yeah. We, so. we had Josh from Dogwood on it on this podcast. A third or fourth podcast. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. He's, 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 a, he's a good dude. Yeah, he's my homie. I love Josh. Yeah. So, so what does Watashiwa look like now if you were to like do you picture yourself going and playing some shows this year or next year? Um Absolutely, or is this yeah. Okay, so what what does Watashiwa look like now? Are are those guys just guesting on stuff, or do you have a lineup? We have a band. So Jeremy from Noggin Toboggan is actually in in the band in my band, um, and then uh, a couple guys that I've been playing with for a couple you know for a while. Teddy um, and Miles. Miles plays guitar, and Teddy plays drums, and and then we we're you know, we'll probably tour with different people de depending on the tour. But yeah, our plan is uh, to tour full time um, when the album comes out, <laughs> you know, as much as we can. And, uh, you know, my goal is to play music full time again. Uh, I, I really feel like, um, you know, I feel like it's where I feel called to it's where i feel like the most myself and um so i i really you know our goal is to uh focus fully on watashiwa and and start kind of like gearing up to do that as much as possible with with as touring and everything gets more normal with this covid stuff so now is your current wife saying that you can tour yeah totally yeah, like her. <laughs> Keep her. I like her. Yeah, she she she's very supportive. Very she loves she loves my music and yeah, it's, she's give she's her loved. a high five for me when you see her. I will. <laughs> we do have Don't a uh, question. We do have a question from uh, one of the listeners. Why do you? Where did you have a bigger following in California? Uh, he's asking stuff you've already answered here. Throw a show. You know, would you throw a show today? Um, where would you want to play if you could play anywhere out? You know, where would you want to play? Well, we all, I mean, we're from San Luis Obispo, so we always have a really good time in our hometown, of course. Uh, and then, and that's probably like where we've got the biggest following because that's where we're from. But we always love playing in LA and San Francisco. Um, I love San Jose, you know, and Fresno. We always like, when, when we were really young, like early years with Watashiwa, we had a great time playing in San Jose in uh fresno so those places they always treat us right and a lot of those bands you know like frito boat uh from san jose and they became li like later on like fighting jacks and um oh i haven't heard that name in a really long time they released just one album on tooth and nail years ago yeah it was literally just one album i remember, I remember to this day yeah i, ha <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of those betty rocket bands too they were from up there so San Jose area, they were, they were good. Logan actually from Frito Boat is on the new album too. He plays saxophone nice. on the new album. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm so, excited about it. It sounds like a good year coming up. Yeah. We're going to announce stuff soon. We don't have everything fully dialed yet, but probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll be announcing release dates. So, are you awesome. amazed how your life, how God kind of like 
stirred, like kind of guided the boat full circle to where it is today? Yeah, I am amazed. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> I'm humbled and, you know, glory to God, all glory to God. I'm, I like, I'm so thankful at this point in my life to still be playing music and, and have the support and people that, that care to listen. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm excited to see what God has planned. You know, I didn't, you know, looking back on all those years, I never really thought anything of it. Like I said, when it was happening, but then you look back and I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know, so you know, I was just going to ask you this question earlier, but we got, we got ahead of ourselves, but looking back, you literally had, you were playing at like one, in my opinion, like the best time in Christian music. You had Amberlynn with you. You had Further Seems Forever. You had MXPX. You were on when Tooth and Nail just started getting really, you had all these amazing bands that you played with and now you're friends with. Like, I know like maybe looking back, you were like, oh, it was just MXPX or it's just Amberlynn. But now it's like, oh, it's Amberlynn. It's MXPX we played with and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. It's crazy. Yeah, I love it. It's life surreal. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, hey, thank you very much for for taking your time to hang with us and uh, you know tell us a little bit about uh, your life. Um, uh, what we normally do from here is we'll release this um, out to uh, Spotify and um, all the other you know listening uh, things. Probably in about a week or so, uh, we leave it up on our Facebook and YouTube as well, so people can check it out there. So. Um, awesome. but yeah, thanks again. And in the future, uh, when you guys actually release, uh, the album or stuff like that, you're more than welcome to drop by again and, and let I'd everybody to, know yeah. about it. So, um, yeah, but we appreciate to. it. Um, and thank you everybody at home, you know, for, for listening today. Um, this has just been another episode of the four seven. Um, I am going to, uh, drop off in a second here. If you don't mind hanging on, we'll, uh, we'll talk after the uh, live is over. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much guys. Hey, have a good good. One. Thank you guys. Have a good one. listening to the 47 podcast the podcast where two normal guys interview and reminisce about their favorite christian artists from the 90s and today